Hello everyone. Today I'm going to make a video on how to remove the DDWRT firmware from a uh, TP-Link uh, WDR4300 version 1. I'm sure it'll work similarly in other TP-Link routers. I'm using Windows 7 and uh, Internet Explorer for this. But uh, if you follow the same procedures and whatever operating system you're using, it should work. So first of all, um, you need absolutely critical here. You need to have your computer or laptop or whatever you're using to uh, remove the firmware from the TP-Link plugged into the TP-Link using a hard cable, an RJ45 network cable, not wireless. Don't do this wireless. You need a hard physical connection to the router. Uh, trying it any other way could result in a, in a you know, bad flash or other problems. So again, can't stress enough, RJ45 cable, network cable between your computer, laptop, and your router physically connected, okay? To one of the standard ports on the back of the router. So let's, uh, first of all, go to our network uh, and sharing center here. Then go to the change adapter settings and disable your wireless connection. That way you know that there's no way you're, you're flashing this or doing this over wireless. This is, needs to be done on a local area connection with an RJ45 network cable. Can you tell that I, I'm, can, am I stressing that enough? Anyways, so there you see that it's disabled so the Wi-Fi is now turned off and I'm only connected through the, through the primary router on the second channel here as, as you can see. That's what I called it anyway, but it, it's basically my local area connection. So let's close that out. Uh, then we're going to go to the router. And in my case is 192.168.3.1. Uh, in most cases, it's going to be 1.1 or 0 0.1. I don't know. It's up to you what you set it to. Let's go there. It's going to ask me for my password. And I'll put that in here. All right, so there we are. There's my DDWRT. Uh, let's go to status. And as you can see, it's a TP-Link TL-WDR4300 version 1. So that's that's what we're working with here. Um, again, I like this DDWRT firmware. I'm on the latest beta, which is 22, 23, 19, sorry, 919. And, uh, you know, subject to change. It works perfectly on this anyway. So let's go to the first place you need to go to is uh, to the DWRT website to get your uh, firmware to flash this back to factory. So let's go there and open a new tab. Uh, let's go to DD and it's dd-wrt.com as you can see there. And then you go to the router database. And in the router database here you just type in, uh, I'm going to just go D WDR there we go and 4300 and mine's a version one so uh, whatever you have make sure you use the right one okay so I'm using TP-Link TL WDR 4300 version one again just be certain you're on the right area because you put the wrong bin into your uh, uh, sorry you're into your router and you're going to be in a world of hurt now you'll notice that the um, web revert uh, file which is what you need to here as it says uh, turn it back to stock it's a it's an RAR file and you need to download uh, RAR from uh, the internet it's it's free so just google RAR and uh, or WinRAR and you'll you'll get it and then you'll be able to open this file up so let's uh, download it and save as I'm gonna save it in a special spot so I know exactly where it is uh, I got a, under my C drive. I have a directory called TP Link WDR 4300. So that's where I'm going to put it. Then we're going to go to that folder. There it is. And there it is. And as you can see, it's a compressed RAR archive, WinRAR. So I've already downloaded and installed WinRAR. Um, I'm assuming that you know how to do that. So next thing you do is double click it. And of course, WinRAR comes up, and as you can see, evaluation copy, so it's free. I'm going to just hit extract to, and it'll just extract it into this directory. There we go. I'm done. 
and as you can see there's the folder and there's the bin okay so the next thing we need to do let's go back to our router and like I said on mine is 3.1 on yours it may be 1.1 or 0.1 it depends on how you configured it and let's go back to let's go to the administration tab okay so there's the administration tab and we're going to go to firmware upgrade okay and there's where we need to go so next thing you do is uh, as you can see here it says after flashing do not reset don't worry about that uh, what you need to do is select the file we just extracted so click on browse go to your C drive wherever you stored that file and there it is web revert bin you know uh, they try to make it as obvious as possible you could open and then you click on upgrade now more than likely when you do this upgrade uh, if your IP address isn't what the default is, which mine is not, and, and uh, what will happen is that it will revert to the default IP address. And the best way to get around to make sure that you don't have a problem with that is go back to your uh, network and sharing center. So while it's flashing and doing its thing, I'm going to go here to change adapter settings. And then uh, look at the, double click on this one. Go to properties on it. My local area connection. And under TCP IP protocol, IPv4, double click that, and it should be set to obtain IP address and DNS server automatically. If it is, then you've got to set right, okay? And basically what it will happen is when the router reboots, it'll give itself the right IP address. Let's go to status on that, see where we're at. So right click it, choose status, and go to details, and it's still on 3.1. waiting for the flash finish. I can see the routers are just rebooted or it's rebooting and you can see my status on my network uh, changing there so the IP address is probably changing as we speak and he says network cable unplugged basically the router is rebooting Okay, so now it's identifying. And then we go to status. Now the reason I'm doing this is to show you how to get the IP address that you need to get back onto it. Okay, so as you can see here, it's gone back to 3.1. Okay, let's go back. In the background, you see that the says upgrade is successful, unit is rebooting. So, you know, I've got to be... Uh, patient here it says okay now my local area connection says network 4 Let's see if the status has changed and it has now you see that the default gateway the DHCP server and DNS server are all now 168.0.1 okay so right now in the background you see my web page trying to get uh, back to the router IP address well you know it's changed the router IP address so it won't go there now so what we need to do is go to 192.168.0.1 which is the default for the revert and the default username for most uh, for this router is admin admin okay Okay, so it's asking me again. It's admin, admin. There we go. So there's the TP Link uh, default uh, software uh, back or the factory software back. Uh, at this point, I guess if you're going to uh, really make sure that this everything's cool, go to System Tools and let's go to Factory Upgrade or sorry, Firmware Upgrade. And uh, currently we're at lease number 44064N. You know, uh, it says here to download the most recent firmware, uh, go to tplink.com. Well, let's, let's go do that.
they get the latest firmware and put it back to the latest uh, version of this. It's always nice to have the latest factory soft, uh, firmware inside your machine. Oh yeah, one more thing here. My my um, uh, router, sorry, my uh, cable modem is for some reason needs to sync with the uh, uh, router when you do a firmware upgrade. So right now I'm not on the internet. Best thing to do if you can't get on the internet automatically, as you should be able to, um, after a firmware upgrade, just unplug the router. Uh, sorry, your cable. Uh, unplug your cable modem. Plug it back in and wait a few uh, seconds. So I'm going to do that. I'm not sure why that happens. I think it might be uh, uh, a sort of sync to the uh, what they call the MAC address on the router and the modem. The two have to be uh, synced when you first turn them on. But anyways, in my case, all I need to do is turn my cable modem off and turn it back on again. So that, uh, bear with me here for a second. I'm going to close this window out. And when my modem's ready, then we'll go on from there. Uh, I find the TP-Link software to be quite robust and quite complete. It's not as good as the DDWRT, of course. But um, if you're having problems with DDWRT, then going back to the TP-Link uh, software is a, is, a good, is a great option. So let's see if this is uh, working now at this point. There we go. So again, I couldn't surf right away. I had to shut my cable modem off and turn it back on again for it to work. Uh, I don't know if that's a specific thing with Time Warner or what, but it doesn't really matter. So we're going to go to support and download. And of course we have a 4300. There it is, WDR4300. It's a dual band. Very nice router, by the way. It hasn't given me a lick of problems. And the latest version is version 1, uh, 13061, which is not what we have. So let's uh, use that. Let's go, oh, let's go look through the list for a second. And is it 1212? Yeah, we're, we're so far back, it's not even on the list. <laughs> so yeah, definitely upgrade your uh, router to the latest firmware. So let's go get it. Here it is. And I'm just going to put it here in uh, under TP-Link. And as you can see, it's a zip. So that has to be extracted as well. I'll try it without... Uh, doing that but I believe you do yeah it says right there use compression software to extract the file so you have to extract the file so let's go and extract that file so C there we go and there it is right there uh, as you can see WinRAR can handle the WinZip too okay so the zip file. So just do another extract. Choose the default. Click OK. There we go. And now we have the TL-WDR4300 version uh, 1, the 130617. We're going there. And there it is. A bin. And that's what it needs. It needs a bin. So back to the browser. And then we're going to choose browse here on this link click the C and go to where you've uh, extracted the bin as you can see it's a bin so open then click upgrade yes so I'm sure I want to upgrade the firmware and then just wait a second again uh, I'm very impressed with this router it seems to work quite well even with the factory firmware I think it's quite robust and quite complete um, definitely uh, a nice interface to it uh, DDWRT of course puts it on uh, steroids but for most people they don't need that 
and it's a quite powerful router too it's got a lot of horsepower to it so if you're looking for an upgrade on a, on your old router this is a, a good upgrade and it's dual band so another plus um, if you don't know what dual band is it uses a 2.4 gigahertz uh, connection and then also gives you a 5 gigahertz connection uh, to give you added network speed but uh, unlike what you may be led to, to believe uh, you can you, it doesn't give you the option to use both at the same time on a single device as far as I know so you choose a 2.4 uh, gigahertz network or the 5 gigahertz network if your network card um, is compatible with that there's another caveat your network card has to be compatible with a 5 gigahertz mega, uh, 450 megahertz speed okay um, my network card is okay so software uh, is upgraded successfully at this point it's just doing a, a, a restarting I don't think you even have to wait all that long let's just go to one here see what we get I guess we do have to wait again nice software tells you what's going on there we go one three six uh, one three zero six one uh, release so there it is uh, flashed up to the latest version okay so that's how you remove the DDWRT software and then return your to a factory um, firmware on your WDR 4300 TP link uh, or TL TP link and works great and also uh, don't forget to uh, go to the website by, by going to by the e easiest way to do this is to go to system tools and then uh, firmware upgrade as you can see right there and then choose the go to the TP link uh, website and download the latest firmware for this uh, last but not least go back to your network uh, configuration so down here I'm using the network uh, icon open network and sharing center go to change adapter settings and enable your wireless card again uh, because you disabled it right don't forget and uh, happy computing after that thank you very much for watching have a great day